How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any of the week, if you want a chance to one of your questions being answered, make sure you drop the comment down below and I'll try to answer each and every question. So this week for this video, I am starting to use the DJI mini mic. So let me know how the sound quality is. So I have some older videos that I pre-recorded. So uh, you're gonna get some of that content uh, you know, while I make the transition, but anything going forward, I'm going to use this mic, especially at work, since it does a pretty good job of uh, canceling out some of the outside ambient noises. There's a lot of riff raps and stuff, a lot of music always playing in the background, you know, air guns going off and things of that nature. So hopefully this does help increase uh, the video and audio quality. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week, and it is, should you be doing a one times trans flush, two times or three times trans flush? So uh, really depends on the situation. In this case, I'm going to assume that we are talking about Honda's six speed transmission. And what usually happens is these vehicles burn up the, uh, the trans fluid super quickly. So uh, there is some uh, PCM updates for some of these vehicles. Uh, so if you're doing that, it still tends to burn up this vehicle quickly, oftentimes leading to a torque converter failure. So um, if it's not too late, you're going to want to try to do a one times flush every 10 to 15,000 miles. If you're to uh, towing the vehicle, uh, you know, towing something with the vehicle, then you want to want to do it probably every 10,000 miles or so. So this is strictly the Honda six speed uh, transmissions found in some of the older vehicles. Honda has moved on uh, to, you know, six speeds, um, excuse me, nine speeds, 10 speeds, uh, and obviously some of these CVTs. Now, uh, if it's to the point where it's juddering, now you could definitely try to use a three times trans fluid flush. Now, if it's shifting really hard and it's doing some wacky stuff, taking long to engage, chances are it's too little too late for that transmission and doing a one time flush or a three times uh, flush um, might be too little too late and could cause some damage. Now, if you're just getting a juddering, then at that point, I would definitely do a three times flush and after five, 10,000 miles, do another one or two times a transmission drain and fills and you know proceed from there. Then after that, do every 10,000 miles. When I say flush, I mean drain and fills. Don't use any machines or anything of that nature. Uh, I have a couple of different videos on this procedure. It's basically the same thing for all the six speeds. Now, if you haven't done your transmission fluid on your CVT, on your 2.0 uh, fluid transmission, so your 10 speeds or your nine speeds, you could also use the same method if the fluid comes out really dark, really you know brownish, blackish. Uh, most certainly could do this as well. Again, assuming that we don't have any harsh engagements, any uh, delayed shifting, uh, hard shifting, anything of that nature. If you have any of those that I just mentioned, then it's probably too little too late. And at that point, you should probably just let it ride out until it you know stops working. Because um, you doing that might just kill it a little bit sooner than it inevitably would. Uh, be dying anyway. So hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, so the next question is again about the 1.5T. I mean, this thing just keeps uh, getting brought up. So I'm going to answer this question. So when I made my video and I talked about using OEM Honda head bolts, so uh, when you're torquing them down, I want you to torque them down to 22 uh, foot pounds of torque and then 140 if it's used bolts and 165 if it's new bolts. Now, with my digital snap on torque wrench, it gives me a reading of um, you know foot pounds after I degree them either 140 or 165. So I am not torquing these to um, you know 45 to a 65 foot pounds. This is what the reading is telling me that is being torqued to. So when I do my 22 foot pounds, after that I torque it to either 140 or 165 degrees, and my torque wrench will give me the reading between anywhere 45 to fit uh, to 65 foot pounds of torque. That's what it's actually getting torqued to. We are not torquing it to those numbers. That's the reading that my torque wrench is giving me. So again, not enough clamping force there in my opinion, leading to some of these issues that we are seeing. And uh, you know, just one of the many issues with the 1.5T, if you have one of these vehicles and you happen to blow a head gasket, aftermarket ARP head studs are a must in my opinion. If you don't use them, chances are 
it's going to happen again. You're going to blow that head gasket. It could still happen, but we've seen great, great success and great feedback from people using these ARP headsets that just have a ton more of clamping force. Keeping those two uh, parts of the engine together so the head and the block, keep them nice and close so they don't lift or stretch or anything under pressure. So hopefully that answers the question for you and clarify the situation. All right, so the next question is, should you follow the maintenance minder or not? So. I don't follow the maintenance minder on any of my vehicles or on any of the customers' vehicles that I personally work on uh, because I just think it's just not aggressive enough. Now, when Honda and other manufacturers put out these maintenance minders and they have these estimated uh, cost of repairs through the life of the vehicle, they obviously take a look into the consideration as a consumer will. So if the consumer thinks it's going to cost more money to maintain that vehicle, might keep them from uh, buying that vehicle. So uh, for as affordable some of these fluids could be and if you're a DIYer you could most likely do most of these yourself so if you're not comfortable with doing it yourself obviously you could take it to your trusted uh, Honda or Acura dealer or repair facility and have them done for you it is cheap insurance it's a lot easier to go ahead and do a, a trans flush a transmission service a brake fluid flush coolant flush whatever for 200 bucks or whatever it may cost you than having to replace a transmission or an engine or something down the line. That's my personal opinion. Now, I do not, once again, follow the maintenance minder. I like to do my oil changes on both my personal vehicles every 3,000 miles. I do fluids every 15,000 miles for the drivetrain, and I do coolant every t uh, between every 45 to 60,000 miles. So uh, that's what I do. Then obviously, um, there's spark plugs and everything involved. On my pilot, I'm gonna do my spark plugs at 90,000 miles or between 90 and 100,000. I'll probably do with the time belt package, to be honest. And on my TLX, I'm going to be doing them at 45,000 miles because the TLX has uh, been modified, seen extra power. Uh, we've also uh, tested some uh, e-blends with it. So a lot of different things going on. I wanna make sure they're good and everything. So it depends on your situation, but again, uh, Honda as of late has done a better job being more aggressive with the maintenance minder. Although uh, for a couple years there, a decade or so, they definitely uh, didn't have an aggressive enough uh, maintenance minder system leading to a lot of uh, oil consumption issues, uh, transmission fluids burning out and stuff like that. So hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, so the next question is, can you change drive modes while driving the vehicle? Do you have to pull over and change those? And the simple answer is no. So my TLX Type S, for instance, has comfort mode, normal mode, uh, sport, and sport plus. I actively change it all the time depending on the situation. Usually I keep it in uh, comfort mode because that'll keep the exhaust valves closed when I start it in the morning, thus not waking up my family or my neighbors and pissing them off. So uh, when I get down the street after driving for a couple blocks, I usually put either normal mode or sport mode. Now, uh, the only thing I don't recommend you doing is uh, switching these modes up when you're wide open throttle or driving it aggressively because it does change uh, shift points and uh, things of that nature, the shift, um, you know, how hard it shifts and stuff like that. Now, if you have something else that has like a snow mode, a trail mode, uh, you know, sand, stuff like that, you can still also change it while driving I would probably not again do it wide open throttle. If you're just cruising along the highway and it starts snowing, go ahead and flick that over and you'll be fine. If you're approaching a um, you know some sand or stuff like that, then go ahead and switch it to sand mode. You could stop if that makes you feel better, but as long as you're not wide open throttle or anything like that, I think you'd be okay uh, in most situations. So hopefully that answers the question for you. On the hybrid uh, reliability, how has it been in the uh, past year? So uh, initially when we started doing these, we were doing a lot of battery packs and the you know earlier models. Now the latest generation has seen some issues as far as the engine itself. The hybrid system has actually been uh, relatively reliable. Uh, so the previous generation, uh, Accords and CRV, so not the current ones, the one right before it, uh, have been relatively reliable. We haven't done anything major. Now, as they are approaching some higher mileages, we are starting to see some uh, head gasket issues. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes, but we're talking typically 150 to 100, 250,000 miles that they are failing. Now, I'm sure how some have failed earlier and some out there probably have, haven't failed at all. So really depends on the situation, but I see, have seen a handful fell between 150 and 200,000 miles. And obviously we're going to start taking note of that and kind of, um, you know, playing it uh, by ear in that situation. Now, again, 
this is the engine itself, not so much the hybrid powertrain system. Uh, again, there's been some uh, inverters and stuff like that that have failed, but nothing on a consistent and concerning basis. So um, I think overall they are good vehicles. Uh, again, we're dealing with some head gasket issues here. Uh, kind of seems to be the trend now with Honda, uh, but we'll see how this all plays out. Not nearly as many failures as you know the 1.5T, although there's not also as many sample models out on the road. There's a lot more 1.5Ts at this point. So uh, Honda seems to be pushing uh, the hybrid stuff. So uh, with the Accords, the CRVs and the hybrids all now offered in a hybrid, hybrid powertrain, we're going to see, you know, five, six years down the road, how they're faring. But um, even the new models, we've seen, you know, maybe one or two different failures as far as the hybrid system goes. Um, obviously some recalls going on with the engine side itself, but overall, um, I think the hybrid stuff isn't really anything to be concerned with. I'd be more concerned with uh, all the other little things going on at this point. So hopefully that answers the question for you and I'll catch you on the next one.